We are just moving right through this series very quickly. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Containerization is awesome. In the previous video, we ran another container, and in this one, we're going to do that again, but we're going to look at how to keep containers running. So let's dive back into Docker. In the last video, I showed you how to run some containers, and I also taught you that container states are not saved. So for example, docker run and then Ubuntu, nothing happens, it's gone. If a container has nothing to do, it deletes itself. And if you do actually make changes inside the container, those changes are lost because like I've mentioned before, they need to be in the image. Now we will actually explore how to make permanent changes to containers via images in video number seven. But for right now, Let's see how we can actually keep a container running in the background because that's the topic for today's video. Now, if you have a command that you want to run that's inside a Docker container image, then you can create a container and run that command by running this command right here, docker run dash it, and then the name of the image, which is Ubuntu in our case, and then the binary that we want to run, which is going to be slash bin slash bash. And once we do that, we have a command shell right inside the container. I showed you this in a previous video, but actually we can simplify this quite a bit because if I disconnect here and then recall the previous command, I actually don't need the slash bin slash bash at the end. I can actually take that away and run the command just like this. And I essentially get the same thing. I am attached to a shell inside the container. I can run a command inside it as you see here. Now the shortened command doesn't completely invalidate this one because you might have a command that you want to run inside the container which is not the default command. But what I'm actually going to show you right now is that we can also use the option dash D as well. So I've added that here and I'll press enter. And wow, okay, so the container exited and I got this little hash number here. So what's going on here? If I run docker ps, we can see that the Ubuntu container is still running. So it's actually running in the background. So the topic in today's video is to teach you guys how to keep containers running in the background. And this command actually does that. So let's walk through this command a little bit. Now to keep it simple, the dash IT right here actually creates an interactive shell inside the container. The dash I is for interactive and the T is for TTY. So interactive TTY or interactive terminal. Yes, it's a little bit more advanced than that, but I'm keeping it simple. Basically the takeaway is dash IT creates an interactive container. Now, if I was to get rid of the dash D option here, it puts us directly into the container. And again, I could run some commands here and it's fine, but it's not running in the background. So if I add the dash D option, it does put the container in the background. So we already know that dash IT makes the container run in interactive mode. The dash D option is new. What does that do? Well, the dash D option activates daemon mode. In Linux, if you didn't already know, daemon is another word for service, basically something we want to run in the background. So by adding the dash D option, it's not attaching us to the container. It's starting the container in interactive mode, which is the shell. It basically means that we have a command prompt that's open inside the container, but the dash D option immediately sends the container to the background. We never actually get to interact with it, but it is running and we know that because we type docker ps and we actually see that. You see that right here. And as you can see, I actually have two of them running. So now that I have a few containers running here, there has to be some kind of way that I could attach myself to a container to interact with it. We did actually enable interactive mode and the daemon mode sent it to the background. So how do we get it back? That's actually very easy to do. And that command is simply docker attach. And then we type the container ID of the container that we want to attach to. So I can copy this right here. Here's the container ID for the first one. 
technically. Actually, it's the second one because it hasn't been running as long as the first. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll just paste this right here. So Docker attach and then the container ID. I'll press enter. And now I am actually attached to that container. So since the dash D option here sent it to the background and I never got a chance to actually interact with it, I then ran the docker attach command, which now allows me to interact with it. So I'll go ahead and exit. Control D in my case. But wait a minute, now we only have one container running. We had two. So when I activated daemon mode on both of those containers, they both started in the background. And then I attached to one of them, and then I exited. Again, when you exit a container, and it doesn't have a command running, it has nothing to do, it gets deleted. But we didn't even attach to this one yet, so this one is still running. But as soon as I exited the first one that I attached to, when it stopped running, it basically got deleted because, again, it had nothing to do. So how can I actually attach to a container and then exit it without it actually stopping? What if I don't want it to stop as soon as I exit the shell? So let's explore that. I'm going to run docker and then attach just like before. Then I'm going to copy this ID right here. Just like we did and I'm going to paste that here. But you know what? I'm going to shorten this a little bit. So I'm going to take away most of the container ID and I'll just have the first two characters. Will that work? Well, yeah, it actually does work. So when you are actually referencing a container ID, you don't have to type the whole thing. Docker is smart enough that if you type enough of the container ID that is different than the others, then it'll know which container you're referring to and allow you to work with it. Now, if I had another container that just so happened to also start with 06, then Docker's not going to really know which one I want to attach to. So I might need to add a third character. But we only need to type as much of the container ID as we need to to make it independent or unique from the others. But you get the idea. It just saves us a bit of typing, which, well, I mean, that's pretty cool. So anyway, I have this container and I'm attached to it. I want to make a change, something that I can refer back to to know that it is indeed the same container. So again, I'll run apt update, then double ampersand, apt install bim hyphen nox. I'll press enter. Enter again. So again, I will put in the code for my geographic area, and again. And now I have access to the Vim text editor, as you see. And then I'll quit out of here. But I actually don't want to lose this container because it's useful. Maybe I can use this container to save some notes. I want to be careful though because, you know, I don't want those notes to get deleted. But maybe I want something running inside this container that I can attach to anytime I want and use and I don't want it to go away. So actually all you have to do is hold control and press P and then while you're still holding control, press Q. If I run docker ps, we can see that the container is still running. So I could do docker attach and then zero, the first character of the container ID because there's only one, should be unique enough. And I am back inside the container and I have access to Vim just like I did before. I didn't actually lose anything. That's pretty cool. So again, it's control P and then Q. You don't let go of control. And that basically just disconnects you from the container, but it doesn't stop it. It keeps it running in the background. So if you are at all curious how to keep containers running, well, now you know. So there you go. In this video, we explored Docker even further. And we're going to do that again in the next video because we're going to take a look at how to access the applications that are running within our container. And I can't wait to teach you guys, so after you've had some time to practice the concept so far, meet me over in that video and I'll teach you even more.